What do you think? Good. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning, February 4th, 2021. Check this thing out. Uh, this is what it looks like now. We're supposed to get two to three more inches of snow later today, starting at like two o'clock. So all things given, or hopefully I'm gonna try to leave work earlier than the end of the day. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a personal performance review meeting with my boss uh, at like 3.15. So I'm hoping I can do that from home, we'll see. Excuse me. Um, I'm hoping she has some good news for me. Like, I'm fucking fed up with doing all this shit at work and not being recognized for doing all of this shit at work. So, um... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into this or something, but uh, we'll see. So, um, Ethereum has reached an all-time high, uh, over $1,600. I mentioned it yesterday, but this is right after I converted all of my Ethereum over to fucking Ripple, which dropped 10% or, or 20%. So that's good. So instead of uh, my Ethereum going up 20% that I was holding, it's now down, or I'm now down like 40% on my initial um, crypto holdings. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm just, maybe I'm just getting burned out with the whole stock market thing. It's getting... Um, it's getting more stressful than it is fun for me. So, um, I, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I got, I'm going to be on call. What is it? February 13th, I think it is. I got a lot of stuff going on with work, man. I just, I'm not feeling it. Like, I have zero work satisfaction, and that's not good when you're <laughs> supposed to be learning a new role and stepping up. I just want to step out. <sighs> yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with all of that, but... Um, I'm going to, um, trying to think, what do I got to get done today at work? I don't know. There's just a few things, but, uh, so it's 720 right now. I have a meeting right at eight to start moving some hardware for these guys. Um, oh, <clears throat> so yesterday I went grocery shopping at Walmart and I bought, I've been seeing them. They've had them like they have them all the time, but they're, they have these $5, Wi-Fi controlled light bulbs and I was like you know I definitely don't have a need for one of these but like let me see what this is about so I bought one and um, checked it out and I was like oh okay well that's kind of cool so um, you know I, it works with Alexa it works with Cortana it works with the Google system, whatever that's called, Google Home or something, and I, uh, <clears throat> it took two minutes to set it up, so I, you know, screwed in the light bulb, I downloaded their app, it's, um, Genie is the company, so G-E-E-N-I, -G -E -E and I can turn it on and off, and dim it from my phone. I'm like, okay. It was only five bucks, but I wanted to kind of, you know, see how it worked and if it worked and if it was shit or what. It looks like you can set it to program uh, like with some sort of like pre-programmed um, 
settings or whatever, like uh, you can schedule it to turn on and off, you can put it into like a group and turn a whole group on and off, stuff like that, right? <clears throat> so, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, well, you know, that's cool. So then, you know, setting up this app, I was looking at settings in the app and I was like, wow, they have a lot of other devices. They have more lighting options, so they have um, light bulbs that you can change the colors of them on there. They have um, light switches, they have outlets, they have um, PDUs or like power strips. They have sensors, so door sensors. They have um, a doorbell camera or whatever. And I'm trying to think what else. All of this connects in with the Wi-Fi and so what I was looking at with this light bulb was, excuse me, yeah, it uses the home Wi-Fi, of course, but it's actually receiving a dedicated external IP address. So um, I can control it from anywhere. And I didn't have to set up any sort of firewall rules. I didn't have to do anything. I, I was like, what? This is interesting. So then I was like, well, what other, what other devices did they have out there, you know, that you can use this technology with? So that's what I Googled. And I mean, they have these door and window sensors, contact sensors. It says that they work for two years on single battery and they're battery powered with Wi-Fi. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is crazy. They have, like I said, they have um, light switches. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. They even have outlets, like I mentioned, where you can have the outlet kick in and out or on and off and stuff. So, um, I, I'm just like, okay, all right. So, yeah. Um, they even have like a flood or water sensor too. So, um, yeah, I'm going to, I mean, it's pretty nice. So, you know, I was like, man, you know, it'd be cool if I could integrate. So I, you know, I always wanted like a perimeter alarm. I know it sounds silly and stupid, but I just, I don't know. I always thought it was something that'd be kind of cool, you know, like if I can integrate some sort of a perimeter alarm that says, hey, somebody's on the fucking property, you know, and alerts me. Um, so, you, you know, when you have a house, you have no clue what's going on outside ever and um, so I uh, what was I going to say so yeah so I um, that's that's what got me thinking so I was like oh let me so I, what I did was I googled um, I googled what was it how like basically I was wondering how do you so I want it so that so I, I use a program called Blue Iris for the camera system right and it's very powerful program it's a it's like a third-party program they don't make cameras they don't do other shit they this is their specialty right is software well you can do all sorts of triggers and all sorts of things like that that will allow you to um, excuse me <clears throat> You know, so I, I Googled, like, I wanted to figure out, okay, if I get, like, there's some other software called Home Assistant and all kinds of other stuff. But I was like, if I get these other pieces of software, can I set it up so that it turns a light on and off when, like, you know, flashes a light or, or whatever, or turns a light on or whatever it is when there's motion detected. So I was like, okay, well, um... You know, so I Googled it, and they were talking about how you can configure some software to, um, you can figure the software to, I guess, stream a video camera feed when motion's detected. So it wasn't quite what I was looking for. I, I originally was searching to find a way to um, turn a light on and off, which seemed simpler to me. but. Supposedly using this home assistant software, you can, it, as soon as motion is, is detected in Blue Iris, which is my camera software, 
it says, okay, stream that camera feed to the nearest TV or to a TV, whatever TV you want, I guess. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I was like, oh, well, that's kind of cool, you know, if it works or whatever. So I, um, I, I was like, oh, okay, I got to get this Google Home Assistant. What is that? What does it cost? Does it cost anything? <clears throat> It's been years since I've been in the home automation business, let's say, or market. So I found out that Google Home is separate from home automation. So home automation is called, is, is the name of another piece of software. Uh, I guess it's an operating system. And, but basically it says, like I found this article that was talking about how to install home automation. It was, I think it was on their website. And it's like, yeah, just get a Raspberry Pi 4 and down, it, you know, plug it in, run this command. It goes out and automatically downloads home automation, the latest version, installs it, and then you can like access it and it runs completely on a Raspberry Pi. And I'm like, okay, I got a whole box of those at work sitting around collecting dust for four months. I'm like, maybe I should grab one of those and take a look at it. Uh, so I'm going to see, I think they're Raspberry Pi 4s. I'm going to look into those and maybe grab one and if I could play with it. I don't know. You know, so then that would be what they call a hub for the home. And everything would connect into that, so to speak. So everything, meaning all of the, um, <clears throat> all of the uh, Wi-Fi home automation devices and stuff like that. So, um, you know, kind of cool. So I think I would have to. I think what I'm going to do is redesign my entire network and make it faster for us, but possibly keep the old setup for the, um, keep the old setup for the IOT devices. So stuff like, you know, um, the Wi-Fi cameras, the Wi-Fi, excuse me, home automation stuff. Um, so it's going to have to take a complete redesign to kind of get that working how I want. Um, so my bottlenecks right now are my WAPs. I have some old Cisco Aeronet. Um, they're like A and B and I don't even think they're G access points that I got from work for free. I learned how to configure them. I set them all up and they're fucking horrible. They're terrible for Grant for his gaming. They're terrible for streaming, all that stuff. And I also have some, I don't remember what switch numbers, but some Cisco, uh, I think they're 24 port switches, but they're only um, 100 meg. They're not um, gigabit, it's not a gigabit switch. So I do have one that I got from Luke that I need to reconfigure and all that jazz. I just need to, well, I just need to do it. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, it's going to take some work, but it's definitely needed. You know, all, all the bandwidth that we use and stuff like that. So, it's pretty crazy. It, you know, it, you don't realize it. And everyone uses, like, Wi-Fi for everything. It's fine. It's just when you have let's say 20 devices using Wi-Fi, right? Every TV, every phone, every tablet, every laptop, um, and then you start getting cameras onto the Wi-Fi, video cameras, and then you start doing stuff like these uh, wireless sensors and all that sort of shit, dude. There, it's just, we're, we're talking upwards of 50 plus devices on the Wi-Fi. I mean, that's, that's a lot, that's a lot. So, um, I tried to move devices off the Wi-Fi where I could, so my cameras are hard wired. Um, my one TV is hard wired. 
what else? My computers, servers, stuff like that are hardwired, but they're still, um, I don't know. They're still just not going to be quite good enough. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's what I'm dealing with. I'm going to have to... So last night I got a little bit drunk and I bought a Aeronet, or I'm sorry, I bought a Ubiquiti um, AC Pro. So it's the pro version of the access point. And what it does is uh, the, it'll, it uses like a mesh type of setup or network and it should allow um, much better Wi-Fi speeds and stuff like that. So um, I'll be testing all this out and seeing what they say. It's uh, one of those things that, um, you know, you don't quite realize what's going on. You just say, oh, damn, my computer's slow, or this and that, especially when you only have, like, a few devices. But once you start getting into some of this stuff, it gets crazy. It gets, you, you definitely can feel the bottlenecks and stuff, especially when you're doing, like, one or two people gaming. So yesterday I was having an issue where, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was having an issue where the Roku streaming Plex, Plex is my media server, was bitching and stop, stopping, saying that uh, my network connection was too slow to stream a movie in the house. I'm like, oh boy. So, um, yeah, that's not good. So it's time to start sorting some of these problems out that I've been having. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it is what it is. I just got to do it. I got to bite the bullet. So it's like when my NAS um, shit was getting all fucked up. So um, this networking stuff, it's going to be one of those things where I buy once, cry once. You know, it's going to suck to buy it all initially, but this shit should last forever, dude. It really should. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Stay tuned for more.